Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it is me, Doomlink, your lovely host, and yeah, in this video we're going to be doing World 4-1, I think. It seems that World 4-1 would be a reasonable choice at this point. I mean, I don't know. You know, it's something interesting, I've always wanted to go into this archstone. Don't know what... I mean, that would be really cool, to just have a new world in Demon Souls to go into. Would have been nice if they did that. They added an additional thing, so then that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, six archstones. That'd be pretty good. I wonder why they just didn't use that one. Oh well, whatever. So let's just go to the Shrine of Storm, shall we? It sounds like a nice plan. This is the archstone of the Shadow Men. And uh, this archstone is kind of strange in the way, in a way, sorry. Um, it's probably... It's just, it's just strange. It feels like it's not required, this entire archstone. There's just something about it. It feels like you don't really need to do it. It's always had that kind of feeling to me. But anyway, uh, these enemies here are quite difficult because as they roll around, they actually do a bit of damage to you because they roll with their sword forward. And that actually does damage to you, and it's really annoying, because if you're running away from them, they'll just roll into you and give you problems. It's not very fun. Now, Soul Arrow actually does a decent amount of damage to these guys. Well, Soul Ray, it's not Soul Arrow, damn it. But yeah, and that's partly because of our Ring of Magical sh Sharpness also. But yeah. Now, this area is quite interesting in the way that it has a really easy boss. Probably the easiest boss in this game. Probably easier than the Phalanx. Well, probably not easier than the Phalanx. That might be a little bit extreme for me to say, but, you know, it's not that difficult, let's just say. But anyway, uh, yeah, this is the first time that we're using the Soul Ray spell. And it's a pretty good spell, I have to say. Con it consumes a lot more uh, MP than the Soul Arrow, but it's still a pretty good thing. Uh, Shard of Bladestone, by the way. I'm pretty sure that's used for additional upgrades in the Dexterity area. I'm not too sure. Can't really remember now, it's been a while, but anyway. Now we need to be careful up here, because as you can see, there are some archers up here, and I'm going to go and snipe them with my stuff up here. And as you can see, the archer skeletons have less health than the guys who have the swords. Which is kind of strange, I never really understood that, because they look like the exact same enemies, they're just using different weapons, but anyway. Now this here is a talisman of God, this allows you to use miracles. And I'll probably get into that at some point using the Second Chance Miracle. Now, Second Chance is really... I'm amazed that they actually added it into this game, because Second Chance, essentially, it's what, it's what the name suggests. It gives you a second chance. So if you die, so if your health hits zero, essentially, your health will be immediately raised to half, and you won't die, <laughs> you know? It's really good. It's, it's, it doesn't get much better than that. But yeah, it was it was really good for use in PvP because, you know, you didn't actually have to kill people to win a PvP match, you know? Just one, once you got that health to zero and they healed again, you know, you just that would be the end of the duel. It was it really worked well in that way. Oh, I'm a little bit chilly right now. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, Talisman of God. You can basically get that immediately when you're going through this world, so... Yeah, it's quite good in that way. Uh, this is the Killage. Uh, this is a pretty good uh, deck scaling weapon, I believe. It's very similar to the Scimitar, I believe. has a pretty similar attack pattern. Yeah, it's very similar. In fact, it's exactly the same. <laughs> it's exactly the same as the Scimitar, but it has better range, which is interesting. In fact, it probably hardly has better range anyway. I don't know, it probably has better scaling or something, I don't know how it works. But anyway, let's go fight the Vanguard here. Essentially how we want to deal with the Vanguard is just, you know, use our magic. Because he doesn't actually respond to you, which is very bizarre, I always found that funny how he just didn't really do anything, he's just gonna sit, stand there and allow himself to be abused by your magic. Oh, we need to avoid that. Damn it, I wasted a fucking thing, anyway. Yeah, so these Stingray things here, they just sort of float around and they'll occasionally attack you. Don't worry about them too much. They don't do that much damage. They are interesting to kill though because I think they drop a particular item. I can't recall what it is, but I remember it's something reasonably important. 
I think... No, he's not coming back. I'm talking about the Stingray, by the way. Or, or a ray, how about that? That's that's more, that's a nicer term to use. Sounds a little bit less juvenile. But anyway, uh, yes, pick that up. Grey Demon Soul. Can't remember what the Grey Demon Soul does. I know you can use the Grey Demon Soul to get his axe, I think, but I don't know what else it's used for. Can't really recall. But anyway, that's a storied hero's soul. It's a good little thing to have there, of course. And uh, sure, let's use another fresh spice. Now, just here, there is a pressure plate here. Just stand to this side here, and you'll avoid those little, uh, whatchamacallits, the, the arrows that come at you. And just here is a two-hander, or, I guess, dual-bladed skeleton man. <laughs> and he's a little bit of a problem, because he does a lot of damage to you, and he hits you very often. So, yeah, be careful with him. And this is an Uchi... no, a Crescent Falcon plus one, wow. So a Crescent... what does what does that do? An Ace Scaling with Strength, holy son of a slut. That's better than what we have here. Well, guess what? We're going to be using this from now on. <laughs> Alrighty, Crescent Falcon. And, and it has the same attack pattern as what we were using before. So now you can understand why in the second episode I was getting confused between calling it the Falcon and the Scimitar. So anyway, the Crescent Path is, I guess, what you use Moonlight Stone for. And I did pick up a little bit of that before, so yeah, that's a good thing. And of course, as you did see, it is stronger than what we were, what we were using previously, which was a plus five scimitar. But anyway, there is a shortcut that we can do here. And I don't know if I want to do it. You see, what we can do is we can stand just up here and roll... And we'll end up on that wall, and that'll be a massive shortcut, but I don't... I don't really know if I want to do it. I know for now, I'm just going to at least go through here and... Maybe do something or other. Actually, you know what, let's just fuck it. There's Sparkly the Crow and all of that stuff, but... You don't really need old Sparkly, do you? Do you really need Sparkly? Anyway, do excuse me, but, uh... Oh, I missed it anyway. <laughs> but yeah, there's a... There you go. That is a massive shortcut that we just did. And the Regenerator's Ring, that is an interesting ring. Because essentially that just regenerates your health over a um, long period of time, I guess. So if we leave it on here, if you watch our health bar, it is slowly increasing. So it's an interesting ring. I remember using this ring for a long time in my first Let's Play. Not first Let's Play, I mean just, you know, my first run through of playing this game. But anyway, um... Oh, there's a crystal lizard up there. I'm going to possibly kill him. I'll use one of my fresh spices and I'll target him. Doing a lot of damage there. Let's use the falcon. Don't really want to waste too much of my magic here. Shard of Dark Moon Stone. I would say, I mean, I, I guess Crescent and whatever Dark Moon Stone upgrades operates similarly to Occult and whatever the other version of that is in Dark Souls. What, what was... It was Divine and Occult, so I guess Moonstone and Dark Moonstone works in that similar way. And it's possible that the, the Dark one is going to work better, because I do remember that Occult was always better than Divine. Oh, I can't go through that. That's usually where you would enter this from, but yeah, whatever. So let's pick up this item, Late Moon Grass, plus three. That's a good thing. Now, how do we actually reach that? Do we, uh, get on this little thing here, and then... Oh, well, that, that didn't really work out, did it? Let me try that again, shall I? <laughs> I know you guys might be complaining, going, Oh, why are you doing this? Why are you doing the shortcut? Well, look, it's a shortcut, isn't it? I can go through this area faster. That's what it means that I can do, so I'm going to do that. Get up there. All right, what is this? Grave Robber's Ring. Let's have a look at... Oh, I'm... <laughs> I almost got hit by one of those things, I could hear it. It's of course those rays that shoot their things. <laughs> rays that shoot their things become harder for black phantoms to detect, so that's an interesting thing. So when a black phantom comes into your world, you'll be almost invisible to them. And so that you can actually end up trolling the black phantoms, it's actually quite funny. Not the NPC ones, but the actual players who come and invade your world. There's another one of those things, but that's very easy to avoid because you can just come to this side here. 
Now, um, I suppose we'll use a soul ray here. Let you do your opening attack there. And then we can... Ooh. Yeah, he's a very good swordsman, this guy. As you can tell. And believe me, that would be very difficult if we didn't have such a fast-moving weapon to help us there. And soul remains, how soul remains work essentially is you can throw them and they'll distract these particular enemies. They'll just sort of like go to where the soul remains are. So if you're having problems with those enemies, yeah, do that. Works pretty well. Now this boss that we're about to fight here is called the Adjudicator. And he's reasonably easy, but he does do a lot of damage. Now, essentially what you can do to start off with is attack him from up here. But you can't really take too much time to do that. Because the problem is, he will basically destroy this ledge that you're on here. I'm trying to hit his head here. Just trying to avoid that there. As you can see, we're doing a lot of damage to him here. Oh, I'm out of, I'm out of uh, stuff here. That's going to do a lot of damage. <laughs> I thought so. Alright. That's... That is almost a death. Right there, that is almost a death. Oh my god, how did I avoid that? Good on me. Oh, I'm patting myself on the back right now. I'm amazed that I did not mess up on that one. That was full on. Okay, that didn't work. Just trying to... Uh, okay, so essentially, I'll explain how this boss works. See that bleeding blade that's sticking out of his stomach? You need to attack that, because as you attack that, he'll fall over and his head will come down. Very similar in a small way to the uh, guy that you need to attack the feet for. The, uh, whatchamacallit, what's, what's his name? The bloody um, Tower Knight boss, that's right. The second boss that we fight in the game. And by the way, look how freaking easy that was. <laughs> anyway, very easy and a lot of souls. Swollen Demon Soul. Pretty easy to deal with that boss. So you can see why I decided that I would do this before I went to the next area. And uh, this area here is quite interesting. It's reasonably long, I think, as well. Kind of longer than you would expect. But yeah, anyway. Now let's let's go pick this up. And what I'm actually going to do before I go to the next archstone is I'm going to go and get Patches of the Hyena to go to the Nexus. What am I doing? <laughs> I went the wrong way. Oh god. I'm, I'm very gassy at the moment. Well, gassy, that's a, that's a bad word. You know, I'm kind of belching a lot, but anyway. Oh, God. Now, sometimes you can get a merchant here, but you have to find him in in World uh, one, 4 1. But I did not find him. Can we attack him? Yes. Just sort of looking at how much damage I can do to these guys. Decent amount. Gives me an idea of how ready I am for this area, I suppose. But yeah, we don't really want to bother with these guys just yet. For now, what I'm going to do... So I'm just going to go down here. Okay, get out of my face, mister. There's a few of these enemies around, and, you know, an interesting thing about them is that you probably shouldn't even waste your time attacking them, because something interesting that happens is when you kill a certain enemy, all of these guys will disappear. And I do plan on killing that enemy. Judging by how much damage I'm doing to these guys, I should be able to take him on. Okay, get out of my face, please. I had to kill that guy because I was getting, like, you know, cock-blocked really hard. So anyway, um, I'm going to use Fresh Spice here because I'm, I'm hoping that I can do a bit of damage to this guy who I'm going to be fighting in a minute. And he's just up here, and he's, he's very strong. Yes, he is the Grim Reaper, this guy. Oh, whoops, I just initiated a cutscene. Well, that opens something or other, and... Oh, whoops. So yeah, this we are both using rather similar uh, magics here, but yeah, I guess I can just sort of stun lock him there. It's interesting how that works. That does a lot of damage. Just need to avoid his little soul arrow there. So we've managed to give him some problems there by causing him to bleed. <laughs> it took me a long time to get that that sentence out because I'm trying not to die here. It's not too difficult to do this, but the problem is his soul arrow does a lot of damage. And I'm trying to get close to him while his bloody minions are like trying to kill me right now. I just needed to 
glitch him out of that. Not glitch him, stun him. Not glitch. So, uh, he, he is a good little thing to use for soul farming. Because if you get, uh, the Ring of Avarice, and use the, the little soul, the, ugh, I can't remember what it's called, it's like Soul Sucker or something. It gives you additional souls, yeah. You can just farm this guy. And he's really good in that way. So anyway, I just wanted to do that for additional souls. Now, this guy here, Patches the Hyena. He's using a shield that we can actually get using the... Uh, well, we don't even... Oh, whatever. Oh, Never mind. The demons haven't got to you, have they? <laughs> I'm in luck. You see that pit? It's filled with treasure. But uh, I can't get to it myself. Go on, have a look. It's more riches than I've ever dreamed of. That's it. That pit just there. Go on, get a little closer. So yeah, he pulls the same crap in Dark Souls, and you know, of course we're going to allow him to just kick us in there for fun. But for some reason, I don't, I mean, I don't really know how people get stuck in there. Because apparently Saint Obain got stuck in there, and yeah, I don't know how that works. Yeah, he's a bit of an asshole. Funnily enough, his character doesn't actually change at all in Dark Souls. But anyway, okay, Crescent Moongrass isn't too interesting. Now that guy there... I don't know. I don't think he actually drops it. I mean, where is it? There's there's an item that's usually somewhere. It's the Magical Sword Makoto. But anyway. Yeah, this guy, he's Saint Urbane. I guess we sort of... I don't know. I guess we sort of rescue him, but anyway. This is a friend of his that was hanging around. And he... Yeah, he turned and bad stuff happened and all that. So, the good thing with these Black Phantoms usually is that they don't have that much... Uh, Poise defense, so you can usually stun lock them really easily. And with a fast attacking weapon like this, it makes it a lot easier. See, we can hit him before he can hit us, and then we can get him into a stun lock. And as you can see, he's bleeding a little, a little bit right now. So that's pretty cool. And the magical sword Makoto is not here, but we don't want it anyway. Chunk of dark moonstone and a stone of ephemeral eyes. So, the reason why I came here was for that Stone of Ephemeral Eyes, mainly. And the, the, whatchamacallit, Patches. Because once we talk to Patches after... Actually, let's talk to St. Obeyan just here, because I think he has some dialogue now that we killed his friend. <laughs> do, 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 do. Oh, it's you. Did you cleanse the world of another Dark Soul today? Dark Soul, oh! God has chosen you. Oh. That we are thankful. Yeah, that's that's good. Yeah, he's a weirdo anyway. <laughs> yeah, he's just a part of the little religion in this game, but oh well. So uh, let's go up and freak the shit out of Patches now. I don't understand why we would have been stuck in there, but whatever. You, you. Hey, look, I'm really sorry. I didn't mean what I said. When a man's got to make a living, right? Here, look. I can make up for it. There aren't many humans like us. We need to stick together. That's right. I know. Here, take this as a token of my friendship. You've seen one of these before, surely. He gave us a ring of gas resistance, which isn't very useful. <laughs> Come on. Let's be friends. What do you say? No need to drag each yeah, alright, well, technically we're friends now because, you know, we've, I don't know, there's no real reason why we're friends now. But anyway, he's going to now appear at the Nexus, and he's going to be a useful vendor, shop vendor, I guess. Oh, damn it. I want to pick up that item, so I'm going to go do that. You need to go down here to go pick that up. See, I mean, I, I, there are no enemies in this area now, so I think there, is there another item hanging around here somewhere? No, I don't know. Let's go up here, and at the top of this staircase is going to be that item. And if I remember correctly, it is a very good item, and you'll see what it is. Stone of Female Eyes! Oh, fucking shit. That's my death, everyone. God damn it. That is something that I totally forgot about. Where is that pressure plate? Right there. That is so bad. 
Oh, damn it. All right. <sighs> shite. Shite on a, on a fucking stick. Shite on a stick, yes. That's what that is. So anyway, uh, I'm going to have to be quite smart about this one. And make sure that I get those souls back. Because if I, for some reason, don't manage to get those souls back, it's not going to be good for me. So let's use one of our many stones of ephemeral eyes and revive ourselves. And uh, get our souls back and get the hell back to, whatchamacallit, face uh, the Nexus. So uh, this should be relatively easy to get back down there. I would say around this point is okay to fall. That shouldn't kill you, especially if you have safe landing. And uh, go back up this staircase here. There's going to be some enemies, I would imagine, just up through here. Okay, there's my soul, bloodstain, whatever you call it. And now we're going to make a quick getaway. Because I don't really want to fight that guy again. Oh, Jesus, that's not good. That's not a good thing at all. I'm going to get stuck in here, aren't I? Or am I? I could have easily gotten stuck in there. Look, okay, fine. I'll fight that guy again, whatever. Yeah, two hand. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> I want to try and kill this guy before his friends come and make it harder for me to do anything. Alright, he's dead. Alrighty, well that, that turned out pretty well. We managed to get a crap more souls. Crap load more souls. So, okay, that all turned out well, thank god. <laughs> As you could tell, I was a little bit worried there. You might have been able to hear that in my voice, but... Anyway, yeah, that could have made things a little bit difficult. So anyway, uh, let's return to the Nexus, and... Oh my god, there's another item there. I, I don't want to get that. Or is that just there? Is that just sitting there? Alright, yes, it is, fortunately. <laughs> Kunai. Yes, I mean, they operate as you would imagine. You just throw them. And I don't know how much damage they do. They probably do bleed damage, I would imagine. That's probably why they're useful. But anyway. Let's uh, head back to the Nexus and go ahead and level up. Because there is a lot of that that we need to do. So we've been recording for quite a while, my god. I'm amazed that we've been recording for this long. Oh, that's right. It's because I've done two bloody videos in this one recording. That's why. It's, I've been recording for one hour and five minutes, essentially. So, yeah. Uh, let's go and equip some souls. I don't know how many I've picked up. A decent amount. Oh, god damn it. Uh, da -da -da, and then, no, that's not what I wanted to do. Alright, do that. That should be all of the souls that I had. Now we're going to consume all of them. So yeah, we've done quite well, and I think this is going to level us up to a point where we shouldn't have too many problems going through World 1-3. So I'm quite happy about that. Now in terms of leveling up this weapon that we have here, I think we might need to go to Blacksmith Ed. As opposed to Blacksmith Baldwin. Yeah, as you can see here, we're not actually able to upgrade through him. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go... Here, and I haven't actually demonstrated Blacksmith Ed to you guys. There are two blacksmiths in this game. One of them is Baldwin. And then there's his brother, Ed, who we haven't actually gone to yet. So I'm going to show you where he is actually located. And don't start freaking out going, Oh God, he's going to go through this area again. No, I'm not. Uh, if you remember the elevator where we died in, <laughs> in episode 2, I think it was. No, it was... Or part. Not episode, but you know, part 3, I think it was, when we went through this area. But yeah, uh, that elevator, just at the bottom of the elevator, is the guy that we want to talk to. And he's Blacksmith Ed. And I'm just going to, I'm not going to do stupid risky things like, you know, trying to jump onto one of those other platforms going down. I'm just going to stay on this one and be safe. And just uh, allow this thing to take me all the way down. I think there is an item that exists just down over here as well. So I'm just going to go and pick that up before I do anything. Renowned soul. Okay, that's it. <laughs> that was pretty great. Anyway, uh, this is Blacksmith Ed. Mm. I haven't seen you around these parts. What does it matter? You need a yeah, so what we want to do here is we want to talk to him until we've actually exhausted his talking thing. I think that's the end of it, yes. Alright. 
So now we're going to talk to him again, and, he, and we're going to be able to give him the Red Hot Demon Soul. Give Red Hot Demon Soul. Yes, we do want to do this. Alrighty, so now should be able to upgrade the Crescent Falcon, and as you can see, we can. Okay, so <laughs> awesome. Dark Moonstone. I reckon that's better than, like, normal Moonstone shards. So yeah, that's awesome. That worked out well. And uh, unfortunately, we can't upgrade it again. But that's alright. This is a pretty damn good weapon for us right now. Because of course, I guess I'm going to be putting more... Alright, that's cool. So we've reached 20 dexterity. That's a good amount of dexterity to stop on. So now I guess I'm going to be prioritizing the upgrading of magic. So I guess we're going to do that from now on. That sounds great. Because of course we've only got one scaling on this weapon and that's magic, so... We'll see the amount of damage this does. It does 206. That's pretty good. I'm happy with that. Like a weapon that does 206 damage that attacks this fast? That's pretty good. That's going to be good for this upcoming area. This is going to be a good weapon to just stick with for the majority of this game also. So I'm pretty happy with that. Now, um... Yeah, alright. So now we're going to go and level up. That's what we're going to do. And I'm going to stop recording after this simply because I think, <laughs> I think I've played enough of this game for today. But yeah, um... Let's go seek soul power, I suppose. Now, um... What should we be doing here? I kind of want to do intelligence as well. I don't know when we get our next spell memory. Maybe 25? I'm going to upgrade magic for now. Uh, do one into that. Why not? Alrighty, so our damage now is 211, which is pretty damn good. For now, anyway. It will only get better. <laughs> That's the good part. And of course, as we go through World 4, we'll be getting more and more shards of Dark Moonstone. And we can probably farm them off that Reaper guy, interestingly enough. I may even do that off camera, funnily enough. I mean, I think we only need... I think we need... How many do we have? We have... Okay, so we need up to five. So... Hmm. I reckon that'd be really easy to get. So what I'll do is I'll actually... Actually, an interesting thing is you don't need these items in your inventory to use them in upgrading. So I should put all of these into the bank. Well, not really in the bank, but you know what I mean. The, the guy who holds your items. Yeah. But anyway, I'm going to go and farm a little bit of Dark Moonstone off camera. I'm going to upgrade this weapon to plus three. And then for the next video, we're going to go into world 1-3 and kill the boss that is located there. And we will be well on our way to actually finishing this game. Well, not really. That might be a little bit extreme, but you know. We'll definitely... I reckon when we kill the World 1-3 boss, we'll probably be about halfway through this game. I think it would be safe for us to say. But anyway, um... Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this particular recording. We managed to, get, managed to do quite a little bit in this recording, and I'm happy with that. So yeah, um... I'll see you guys... When I happen to see you next, this has been part 6, I think, and I will see you in part 7. Catch you later.